Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my video series, which explores the triumphant victory of Donald John Trump to the office of President of the United States of America. This particular video is my favorite of the entire series. I love it because it has almost nothing really to do with politics. I want to present some simple facts that happened during the election process of 2016. According to those facts, not only should Donald Trump have failed to win the general election, he should have failed to get past the nomination process. And yet, he's going to become president. It's something that doesn't make sense, and yet, it does make sense. Let's do an experiment. Imagine that a person is applying for a new job at a major international company. The type of job and the type of organization doesn't matter just yet. For now, we are going to look at some general facts as is. For this experiment, you are the hiring director. Although you won't have final say on whether the person gets the job, your decision will be crucial to the process. Imagine that this particular applicant has no direct experience in your organization's field of business. That applicant has been in other careers that could be considered applicable experiences. Still, the applicant hasn't performed the job that covers the type of work that your organization handles. Finance is a major part of your organization and whoever gets a job will be in charge of balancing the annual budget. The applicant is very proud of his overall money management success in his usual field of work. Despite his triumphs, he has had several serious failures. He has had to file for bankruptcy multiple times. He has been linked to over 400 lawsuits. He is currently being audited by the IRS. During a particular year, he reported a near $1 billion income loss. To say that the applicant's track record is spotty would be an understatement. Next, imagine that the applicant is known for saying rude, insulting, and controversial statements, several of which can be classified as sexist, racist, and xenophobic. Several of the ideas that he has for your company, assuming he gets the job, can not only be considered sexist, racist, xenophobic, or homophobic, but also flat out illegal. Illegal by your own organization's laws, as well as illegal by international laws. By the way, the applicant's controversial statements are not rumor or gossip. These statements are publicly documented proclamations. You have personally witnessed him making such statements. His statements are so polarizing that many of the people currently within the organization from all levels and departments do not want to work with him. In fact, several of the people that originally encouraged the applicant to try out for the job have changed their minds. They no longer want the applicant to become part of the company. The job features a long-term contract. The contract can last up to eight years. There are five living people that have held the job and their combined experience spans the previous 40 consecutive years of your organization. None of those people have endorsed the controversial applicant. In one method or another, all of them have stated that the applicant would be a horrible choice for the position. To be fair, each of those five previous employees has a unique personal bias in their decision to not support the candidate. Still, the combined opinion of those five experienced employees carries serious weight and should not be ignored. Back to the subject of controversial statements, the applicant is a notorious liar. Again, to be fair to the applicant, all of the other people that are applying for the position have been known to lie. It can be argued that a talent for deception 
is a requirement for the position. Your organization has several secrets and maintaining a positive public image is vital. Although confidentiality is a major part of the job, you will want the hired person to be truthful overall. The other applicant's combined average of lying, regardless of the reason, is 37.8%. That number is based on an internet service that continuously monitors the truthfulness of the people within the, your organization and any serious applicants for positions within the company. 37.8% is the average for the other applicants. What is the controversial applicant score? 70.00%. Yes, 70%, nearly twice the average of the other applicants. If the concept of liar, liar, pants on fire was for real, then the controversial applicant's trousers will be a four alarm inferno. Delving further into the other applicants, it's not like you are burdened with the controversial person and two or three other picks. Not yet. Instead, you have over a dozen people to choose from. Several of them have experience. Several of them have applicable experience but aren't constantly lying or making inflammatory statements. Best of all, Two of the applicants have been groomed for the position over the past decade. They are purebred legacy applicants with the knowledge, experience, talent, and personal resources to perform the job excellently. You can't go wrong with either person. But even if you didn't select one of them, almost any of the other applicants would be a solid choice for the role. At the very least, you wouldn't need to consider installing a revolving door to the Office of Human Resources because the person you hired keeps saying, acting, or posting derogatory claims about personnel, the shareholders, and business allies. So let's review. The applicant has no direct experience. He has turbulent business practices, including hundreds of lawsuits, a near billion dollar income loss and is currently being audited. He is known for making polarizing remarks about almost every demographic within the organization. A significant portion of the people within the organization at all levels of the business don't want him to get the job. None of the people that have held the position for before want him to get the job. Some of the people that originally endorsed him have changed their minds. The applicant is a compulsive liar. Several other proposals that the applicant wants to apply are illegal. Finally, you have plenty of other worthy applicants to consider. Now be honest. If you were the hiring director and such an applicant came your way, then you would not hire such a person. You'd probably rip up his application as soon as it touched your desk. You might not even offer the standard, thank you for your interest, but, message to the applicant. You'd want to be done with that applicant as soon as possible and move on to the worthy contenders. That would make sense, right? Unfortunately, the rules of the company state that such an applicant has the right to go through the entire hiring process. He can only be eliminated by his own decision or if the shareholders lend their support to other applicants during the process. Okay, fine. Surely such an applicant wouldn't make it past the first or second stage of the process, right? Nope. The applicant continuously climbs the ladder. Okay, fine then the applicant must have improved his behavior. No more controversial statements. His lying percentage had decreased. Some of the people that changed their mind are back on board. At least one previous person that held the job supports him, right? Nope. The applicant becomes more controversial and mischievous. He continues to blatantly lie. 
more people have reversed their support for the candidate. And the previous men that held the job still haven't endorsed him. There was even a publicized videotape in which the applicant might, might have confessed to several acts of sexual assault. Everyone within the organization saw the video. The video doesn't offer proof of a crime, but the applicant confirmed that the footage was authentic. Despite all of this, the applicant continuously climbs the ladder. Okay, then the other applicants must not be as good as we thought, right? Nope. They each continue being well-suited for the job. Yet, those able men and women fail to get enough support from the stockholders, and the controversial applicant climbs a ladder to the final round. Before we talk about the final round, I have to point out something. During the entire hiring process, the applicant complained about the system being rigged against him. He complained about biased media coverage. He complained about possible tampering of the voting process. Whenever he gave a bad performance, he found it an excuse to crutch on. The earpiece was bad. The microphone was bad. The interviewers were biased. Despite the fact that he constantly climbed the ladder, he complained the entire time. He wouldn't even confirm if he would accept the final hiring decision. He said, I'll keep you in suspense. All right, this person whose application you would light on fire under normal circumstances manages to reach the final stage. The opponent for the final stage is one of those groomed top contenders that I mentioned earlier. She has endorsements within the departments and at least three of the five previous men that held the job also endorse her. In fact, the other two men of that five might secretly endorse her as well. She is respectful and poised at all times. She only lies 26% of the time. That's nearly two thirds less than the controversial applicant. She has arguably the most executive level experience of any applicant in modern history as both an associate and direct employee of the company. No, she isn't perfect. She is human. She has made mistakes. She has been investigated several times for her family's business practices. She has been investigated about some of the mishandling of her job duties. But despite the investigations and setbacks, she hasn't been charged with any crimes. She hasn't been forced out of her jobs. One of her family members significantly embarrassed the organization, but that was nearly 20 years ago. The company recovered its reputation and it is unlikely that a similar embarrassment would happen again. The groom applicant is flawed, but not on the level of the controversial applicant. Not on paper, at least not as purely showcasing the facts as is. So, the purebred applicant was hired, right? The controversial applicant finally lost, right? That's what's supposed to happen, right? The person with first-hand experience and glowing recommendations is supposed to get the job, right? That would make sense, yes? Surely, an applicant that is culturally controversial abundantly lies, obsessively complains, and is barely tolerated by the other personnel and isn't recommended by the people that held the job ultimately failed, right? That would make sense for him to fail, right? Well, if the organization were Microsoft, Apple, Google, KFC, Geico Insurance, the Walt Disney Company, the NFL, a bank, a restaurant, a hotel, a school, or just about any local gas station, then such controversial applicants would fail to get jobs. That kind of applicant would fail miserably. However, the applicant did get the job. He won the position fair and square. The t 
top executive job, including a six-figure salary, personal lodging, transportation, security, and an initial four-year contract with the possibility of eight years. The shareholders supported him, and they decided to hire him. How could this be? Why was the applicant successful? It was because of the final details that I will now share. The organization was United States of America. The position was president. The worthy applicants were Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, Chris Christie, and Bernie Sanders. The purebred applicants were Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton, with Hillary making it to the final round. The previous folks that held the position were the living presidents, Obama, Bill Clinton, Jimmy Carter, and the two Bushes. The people within the organization that resisted or switched their support were the numerous governors, mayors, generals, senators, representatives, and what have you of the United States. The videotape of the possible confession to sexual assaults was the infamous Access Hollywood locker room talk footage. The stockholders were the voting public, both during the nomination process and the general election. Of course, the controversial applicant was Donald John Trump. You might be asking, how could this be? You're just trying to paint Trump in a bad light. You're just a hater. You are biased. You're a Hillary sympathizer. You're distorting the facts. You're making excuses because you lost. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. No. Everything that I presented was truth. Not the from a certain point of view kind of truth. Straight up truth. Go ahead. Double check me. Triple check me. It was all truth. An applicant like Donald Trump wouldn't get a job as a greeter at Walmart, but he somehow managed to become the equivalent of CEO. It doesn't make sense, and yet it does actually make sense. Although the United States is 240 years old, the requirements of the presidency has barely changed. Pretty much any natural born citizen that is at least 35 years old and breathing has the right to apply for the job. Endorsements don't matter. Controversy doesn't matter. Things like experience, honesty, legal agendas, or even health status do not matter. It also doesn't matter if there are several better qualified candidates for the position. It doesn't matter how well he performs in the final stage. For this analogy, the final stage is the presidential debates. As I mentioned earlier, the applicant can only be eliminated by his or her own choice to step down or if the stockholders don't support him during the evaluation process. None of the usual factors that determine whether or not an applicant lands the job matter. Theoretically speaking, the president-elect could take the oath of office while currently incarcerated for several felony convictions. It will be just as valid as any other former president's confirmation. Yes, that is how our government is actually set up. To make matters more bizarre, the mathematical majority of the stockholders did not want the controversial candidate to get the job. The method for tallying support is a complicated process designed to make the hiring decision more fair. Thanks to the special method, the tally favored the applicant, therefore he was hired. In this experiment, the voting public are both the stockholders and the hiring director. In a way, that's what voters are. Each voter has to crap his or her own vote based on the qualifications of the candidates, like a hiring director evaluates the job applicants. Each vote is like a stock investment. The voting public continuously supported Trump through the nomination process, despite creating controversy and backlash on a near weekly basis. Although Trump usually got majority votes during the nomination process, he did not win 
the popular vote in the general election. He only won the electoral college. Therefore, when I said the mathematical majority of the stockholders did not want Trump to have the job, I was indeed telling the truth. Thus, our imaginary experiment comes to an end. As I stated at the beginning of this video, I love this topic because partisan politics are not a contributing factor. Based on the facts about the candidate, Donald Trump's campaign should have been defeated for an abundance of reasons. Trump's day one should have been his day last. However, he won the election. He will take the oath of office. Thank goodness, at least he won't be doing that behind bars. What do you think, Mr. or Miss YouTube viewer? Do you agree with my general assessment of the 2016 election? If you were eligible to vote in that election, do you feel that your vote made sense or did not make sense based on the facts that I presented? Also, do you believe that we should update the requirements for becoming president or should we just keep the status quo? I look forward to reading your thoughts. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to share this video. Please remember to share your comments. Please be respectful in the comments section. And most of all, find inspiration everywhere.